What's up, YouTube? Hope you guys are having an amazing week. I know I am. Um, I'm really excited to share today's project with you, my little one-day build of doing cat power armor from Fallout. Anyways, um, I'll give you a quick recap of the story of us so far of <laughs> how this all came about. Uh, a few days ago, Saint Smart was generous enough to send me two rolls of their brand new uh, Saint Smart Pro Free filament in PTG and PLA. Now, um, I'm going to talk about the PTG in a future video since um, I have a different project in mind and I'm going to focus on Zip PLA. Um, so basically, they wanted me to do a review and basically, they told me, make something awesome. So, I kind of racked my brain because I wanted to do something quick, some turn turnaround. I'm working on, you know, Janji. I'm working on T51 power armor. So it was like, can't really take on another project at this point. So I looked over at my cat, Schrodinger. I know, I know, great inside joke there. <laughs> and um, I decide, why don't I make armor for my cat? So I kind of was racking my brain, racking my brain, kind of thing. And then it occurred to me, E3 is happening. Cat power armor. I've already done T60. I'm working on T51. So I kind of got the know-how and experience and I can adapt, well, the models to fit a cat. So that's what I did. So this video is dedicated to how, showing you how I made my set of cat armor and you can use it as a follow along for yours because I'm going to be releasing all the STL files I use to make the armor free for anyone to download on my website, 3dprintedcosplay.com. Anyways, without further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, so I'm gonna give a quick review on my thoughts on the Saint Smart Pro Free PLA filament. Um, all in all, it's a super solid workhorse PLA. Like I'd, I'd happily use this without any real jams or issues on the machines all day and every day. However, there were some things that really impressed me with the execution of these spools. First off being is how tightly wound and really cleanly tangle free. Like they, they in the, on the box it says tangle free, they live up to the promise. This is about 100 meters in and it still hasn't unraveled or really gotten to any point where it's in any serious danger of jamming. Contrast that with a, uh, a regular, uh, an older spool of um, Saint Smart PLA. You can see it is all over place. So clean, all over place. And I'm not saying, here's the thing with uh, filament, tangled filament. Very rarely does it actually turn into a problem, but this is peace of mind. So if you want, you know, filaments or spools that just work, this is actually gonna be a pretty solid play. Now, the other thing that really impressed me is, you know, how, when you're probably down to like less than half of the spool left or, you know, a tiny bit, you never are quite sure how much filament you have left on the spool. So you have to play this sort of almost roulette of, do I have enough filament on the spool? Here, it's actually clearly marked in 100 meter increments of how much filament you have left on the spool, which is, I gotta say, really useful because I've had so many times where I play that roulette and I just come up a bit short. So yeah, those two things make it really awesome. Now, apart from that, like I said, it's your standard quality uh, PLA filament with a, I believe a 0.2 millimeter um, filament diameter. It handles m the same temperature ranges as most PLA. For me, that was 205 to 215 is a really good sweet spot. Like, so I just printed the cat power armor with um, a 210. Uh, apart from that, like it's a solid filament, awesome, I like it. So the first step of the process for me was 3D modeling all the parts, for which I used my trusty copy of Fusion 360. After measuring my cat, I set to work on loosely recreating the T60 chest and back plates, while scaling down my actual T51 shoulder plate model so I could make Schrodinger's armor a scavenged mix of T60 and T51 armor. Then it was time to print. The whole process took about nine hours on my Monoprice Maker Select Plus. And apart from one bed adhesion mishap, 
I had no issues getting it all printed as whole parts. Of course then, I needed a way to attach all the pieces to Shro without making her too uncomfortable. To do that, I sewed together a simple harness for her using some spare fabric and velcro I had left over from an old project. You, however, might be better off getting a cheap pet harness from the dollar store and sewing velcro to that as I feel I took way more time than I saved money in reusing the scrap material. After cleaning up the prints a bit, it was time for me to paint. While I would normally use filler primer and solvent-based paints to remove any trace of the print lines from my models, I did not want to take any chances with my cat's health, so I opted to use non-toxic acrylic paints on the exterior parts of the prints to add some weathering and details to the armor. After a long day, it was all done. And now came my toughest challenge. Would Schrodinger let me put the armor on her, or would she rebel and tear my face off, before going on to start a nuclear war and reshape the world in the image of cats? While it cost me a can of wet food and one third of my cat treats, Schrodinger was willing to tolerate wearing the armor and was super patient with me as I took many, many photos and videos of her for half an hour. And that, folks, is how I made cat power armor. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, feel free to hit that like button and subscribe for more cosplay, 3D praying, and cats. Until next time, 